So one of the young brothers once told me this story. He said we were giving street da'wah and we had a da'wah table. Big sign that said, free Qur'an. He said this old lady came up to them and she said, what did Qur'an do exactly? She thought Qur'an was some guy who's in jail and they're trying to get him out of jail saying, free Qur'an, get Qur'an out of jail. Now what the story really shows is that how little people know about Islam. And that's why it is so much of our responsibility that we tell people about Islam. We all know the story of Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu. And we know how he searched and went from one place to another searching for the truth. And this could be your neighbor, this could be someone around you searching for the truth, traveling to India, looking for enlightenment, looking for spirituality. Well, you were right there, right next to them. People searching for the truth, right? Salman al-Farisi was going all over the place searching for the truth. Maybe your next door neighbor searching for the truth. How many times have you seen someone take shahada in the masjid and just cry? and shed tears when, after finally finding the truth, after finally accepting Islam. You know, the one time I was talking to this guy and he had become Muslim like 10 years ago. And he was telling me the story of when he took his shahada and people were making takbirs in the masjid. And he told me that whenever I remember this story, my hair stands up. And he pulled up his sleeve and his hair was standing up. 10 years later, he was so moved by that incident. You know, one time in a street like this in Washington DC, I'm handing out pamphlets about Islam. And, and literally, I just gave the man a pamphlet. That's all I did. I didn't say anything. I didn't say, good morning, how are you? I just gave him a pamphlet and he said, okay, what do I do now? I said, what do you mean? He said, to become Muslim. I said, you know that it's serious, that once you leave, you don't, you don't, you don't, once you enter, you don't leave Islam. He said, yes, I know, I'm ready, khalas. How many people are just like that? They're right at the edge. They just need a little bit of encouragement. They just need you to reach out to them. So this is one of the main reasons why we need to give so much da'wah. But on top of that, Allah Azawajal put added bonus in it. And that is you get immense, immense reward. Imagine I told you there's a stock where if you put one dollar, it's multiplied by seven, and then the seven is multiplied by 10, then the 10 by 100, and then it can keep on multiplying. What would you do? How much would you invest in this stock, how much money would you put into it immediately? But this is how da'wah is. The reward keeps going on and on and on. يعني النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم when he told Ali رضي الله عنه لأن يهدي الله بك رجلا واحدا خير لك من الدنيا وما فيها It's better for you than the best of wealth or better for you than the whole world and everything that's in it. So if we took this hadith to heart, how much da'wah would we give? Would we ever feel too lazy, too shy, too tired, too busy to give da'wah? No doubt we're going to go out and we're going to give it our best. This is the importance of taking the course, Shahada, Fiqh of Da'wah. So we know how to approach people, we know how to answer questions, and we know how to call people to Islam.